It's time for the week 46 progress report and we have some big news this week, so let's get to it. So by far the biggest news we have this week is that early access has been delayed to 2020. While this is disappointing for a lot of people who are just throwing money at their screens just wanting to jump in and play, let me assure you, this is most definitely a good thing. Firstly, let's be thankful that unlike other companies that we have been told well in advance of the end of the year. Frozen Byte are wanting to make sure early access is a bit more feature complete and these extra features will make the game far more enjoyable to play. This is hugely important for the growth and reputation of the game. If certain features were missing, this could lead to bad reviews on Steam or in the gaming press, and we don't want this. First impressions are so very important for a game. Just look at how badly things went for No Man's Sky in the beginning, just to name an example. I'm a firm believer in not rushing things and putting quality first, and I'm certain this will show when the game does finally hit. This is also echoed by what Frozen Byte CEO Lowry had to say. While we have made great progress towards Alpha, we couldn't begin Alpha in the time frame we hoped for. Thus it has become clear that we are unable to complete Alpha during 2019 at the level we want the game to be at for EA launch. And we won't skip Alpha or necessarily fixes due to this. It's better for everyone to release the game in good shape. The positive news is that we are also to create a few very nice features to EA launch which we initially hoped to achieve during EA. Technical and general level of quality of the game is done by certain people, and other features by others. So it's not possible to use everyone just to make the core features, thus also bringing new features to the game all the time. But I'd argue delay is mainly since we want to be absolutely sure of the high quality of the game at early access release, and we will also get new features thanks to that. You really have to respect the transparency Frozen Byte are giving us here in the game, and being honest with the community is what we need more of in the gaming industry. So to quickly recap, there is nothing hugely wrong or broken with the game, they just want to give us as players a more feature rich experience for early access. The invite only closed alpha testing that will come before early access is still going to happen, and will focus on stressing their server side tech and finding some of the player limits that they can't do with the limited amount of people in their company, as well as larger scale battles and balancing. I know a lot of you are asking how people get into this closed alpha test, and the devs have stated they will invite based off the most active community members. So be active, be kind, be helpful, and your chances may be pretty high. Now on to the rest of the progress report. This week's design features worked on are the social menu features have been tested, insignia and medals menu design is updated, tooltip system mockups are updated to fit current design, components and collectors are added to the assembly job furniture hall, there are new UI mockups for the assembly job terminals, the building tool has been tested in station lots, destructible stations have been tested, the economy design has been worked on with the insurance and registry costs, pre-made and custom ship pricing, and economy logic plans with code. Generating LODs or level of details for objects was tested. Physics and shooting LODs has also been tested, and showroom tech was tested as well. The ship's control page for companies has been reworked, the ship list has been rearranged, and the UI was cleared up. Pop-up window in the company general page has been updated, Stations and ships UI has been improved, less scrolling and more room for access controls and teams. Company ship requirements design worked on, with adding a ship to a company and design registry and name for company ships. And the navigation receiver accuracy problem has been solved. Ship creator design work this week sees an overlap issue in the YOLOL socket device, investigated and tested. Add to and remove from area selection now works. Asset layer system with objects hidden and lock categories should be free from selection. And layer tasks have been updated. Adjusted alpha level does not take effect unless the corresponding hide layer button is pressed. Now these updates in particular show quite a bit about how they're going to be doing the Starship Creator. It's going to be a bit more like using 3D app where you can hide certain aspects if you need to and work on stuff that could be hidden or blocked by the objects that you're hiding. So that's pretty cool. Now to the gameplay updates. Decor snapping fixes have been made, pose extrapolation, some cases fixed and velocity calculation math has been improved. Objects not sticking to the robot arm grab tool, rigidity is fixed. It is now possible for design to configure multiple robot arm tools on the same voxel component. Quick net sync for lamps has been implemented and lamps fill changes are now previewable 
in the Starship Grater. An item order issue was fixed in inventory. Support added partially for ships to be saved to station inventories. Coherence of point snapping poses improved. A new system to handle various player sourced sound effects is now in development. I wonder if this could be hinting at a voiceover IP system, as I have seen players ask for that, or it could just be for emotes or weapon sounds. Players other than the group leader are now able to spawn asteroids when doing the mining job as a group. The handling effects and sounds have been cleared up in order to have more effects and sounds. And the cable tool and pipe tool now only consume ammo, cables and pipes when spawned. The placing of cables and pipes can now be started and cancelled without loss of ammo. UI work updates over the last week have been CV updates and fixes, and code has been refactored. Basic layout and rendering for the company rank edit page has been added. Scroll section added to the company overview page. Team menus and add member button has been updated and open blueprint search functionality is now implemented. Starship Creator work includes transformation previews no longer use functional devices that caused issues with interacting with their environment. The object highlight system has been refactored. Asset layer system has now been reworked. Bugs with the Spaceship Creator window input leaking through resizing and moving windows has been fixed. And a bug which caused the game to sometimes crash in the Starship Creator when resizing the game screen has also been fixed. Renderer updates, our volumetric fog system is now added. History sampling improved and numeric stability in SSR has been improved. SSR in this case means screen space reflections. Onto the station art updates this week. Variations on rail textures have been added. Ship showrooms have been updated. Deco and decal polishes, general parenting and polishing. Pillars are under rework and collision errors from all big mega stations between level art and bridge fixed. Weapon artwork includes long rifle muzzle flash updates are underway, side flames and more smoke was added. The muzzle flash of 12mm weapons polished, used by both battle rifle and the revolver. The minigun effect has been modified with additional particles. A start point effect has been made for the mining laser, new LOD models for the rocket launcher, third person carry and universal tool idle animations for the flamer. We have a small player update thrown in here as well with the adamant, base plate and dreadnought armor sets textures being tweaked to be more in line with the other sets and sets paint jobs were modified to work better with different armor combinations. And lastly other updates for this week are a smaller version of the basic trash can UI icon has been created. Weapon and tools now move to the side of the view in first person when carrying an object or interacting with the universal tool. This improves interactability. So some good updates here and remember don't be discouraged by the delay to early access. It's a good thing and we're getting a better game because of it when we finally hand over our hard earned cash. But that's all we have for this week. Feel free to join me on my Discord to talk more about Starbase. There's a link for that below. Like and share this video with your company and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator out.